Hello, hello, and happy Tuesday. Actually, it's happy Tribe Day for me. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you know that Tuesdays for me are the day that I, um, I like to say thank you to the people in my life who uplift, support, and encourage me to do what it is that I do, uh, which is coaching, because this is my passion, it's what I love in helping others, managing their emotions so that they can be the master of their life. And so I truly appreciate you. I just wanna say thank you to those people because without your support, you know, I mean, I know that I would keep going because my why is really, really important to me and it's really, really strong. But with your support, it just helps me. It gets me through those moments when I'm doubting who I am and what I'm doing. So I just want to say thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for, for just being those people, those shining light in my life, helping me to and supporting me and getting me through every day so that I can be the best version of me. I can show up every day to, to uh, support and encourage and uplift those people who I am serving. Now, if you've seen the title notes, today's topic is why do I keep letting my emotions get the best of me? Really, really super important question. Listen, it's essential for emotional well-being to be self aware, right? To achieve self-awareness around our emotions so that we make better decisions on how we respond when we're triggered based on how we're feeling. Now, achieving self-awareness also means taking time to really getting to know who you are. You have to know who you are as a person. You can't just say, well, I'm this, I'm not, like I'm a mom, I'm a sister, I'm a wife. Um, you know, you, you can't, th those are just surface things, like really getting to know like your emotions, who you are, how you emotionally show up. Also being open to change because change is inevitable. And then last piece, which is really important, embracing that pivoting may be part of your process along with change. So good morning. My name is Leslie Gaudette and I'm an empowerment coach. I help my clients achieve self-awareness around their emotions so that they can handle their triggers, manage their emotions and live a more positive life. So as I said, this week, uh, today we're talking about why you allow you know, your emotions to get the better, better of you. This week's slides are all based around emotions and our triggers. And as I said, yesterday we covered triggers and what they are and the question of, is there a cure? <laughs> well, it's not really that, but you know, people think, is there a cure? Like there's something wrong with them and there's nothing wrong with you. We're just emotional, emotional beings. So today I'm going to talk to you about the question that you may be asking yourself daily, which is why do I keep letting my emotions get the best of me? But before I get started, let me talk to you about this chart that I have behind me. Thank you for joining. I appreciate your support. So today, I want to just quickly tell you what this is. So this is what I call the triggers chart. This is something that we navigate daily. As you can see, I've written in the middle our cycle on repeat. And so we do navigate this daily. Maybe it's only once a day, um, but it could be multiple times a day. Depending on how busy your life is, you know, you, you're interacting with different people, different scenarios, different situations. So there's going to be times where you are triggered. So some triggers could be like, it, today could be um, an anniversary date of loss or trauma, right? Today could be that day. Or maybe there's something that's going on in the news right now. It's really super scary. And that's just got you freaked out and stressed and anxious, angry maybe. Um, then there's could be the family friction. So we just came off of Thanksgiving here in the US and I'm sure <laughs> there were some interesting conversations around the dinner table. I'm hoping though that people were able to really just get into the bonding process and just be connecting with those family members, the people in their lives. Uh, it could be the ending of a relationship, possibly the end of a uh, really personal relationship, meaning romantic, or it could be a really great friendship that's gone sideways, and so that relationship's ended, and it even could be a professional relationship, and so that's, that's really tough. Uh, isolation, being overwhelmed, uh, maybe you feel judged, criticized, teased, or put down when you were growing up, and last but not least, last but not least I'm talking too fast, sorry about that. Financial problems. Uh, I'm trying to like to keep make sure my lives aren't too long. So I, I know that you all have busy lives. So again, uh, financial issues. We are in that season of giving. So people have the on their minds about going Christmas shopping and buying gifts for those people in their lives. And so then part of that is feelings of okay, how much money do I spend for the quality piece? Quantity. How many? Gifts to it by who am I buying for? Listen, for me, it's like you've got a budget, you stick to budget. 
Number two, when you're giving a gift, typically you're not going out saying, okay, I'm gonna buy a crappy gift for this person. I'm gonna buy a crappy gift for that person, right? That's not how, you, how it works. When you're giving something to someone, it's because you have a feeling behind it, which is you want to give something nice. Now, it doesn't have to be an expensive gift. As long as it's coming from here, the heart, that gift is, the quality of that gift is priceless because it's coming from love. So just remember that when you're out shopping for gifts, again, quantity over quality is not the way to go. It's, it's sorry, quantity, quality over quantity is how you want it to go. And that means making sure that it's coming from a place of love. So triggers, as I told you what they are, they can invoke an emotion. And what our emotions do is they make us show up in a way, the things that we say and we do based on how we are feeling, based on how we were triggered. And then that can take us down one of two roads, uh, depending on where you're at in your whole um, uh, awareness piece, uh, place in your life. So if you're self-aware, you're typically gonna be able to show up making better decisions uh, when you are emotionally triggered, you will understand that and be able to show up in a way where you can be more um, conscious of that, of the things that you say and you do, so that your positive reward means that you're not having to worry about uh, negative things, right? You're, you're able to like be present in your life and moving forward with your life. But if you are that person who allows your emotions to get the best of you, meaning your emotions are your, the way you emotionally show up is your normal MO, then it typically takes you down a road to guilt, shame, and regret, meaning... You, once you've cooled off, had time to think about it, cooled off, and then you realize that somebody's um, feelings got hurt or maybe something happened where you undermined uh, something positive, you have to go back and fix it. So that's what I mean by the, the negative piece. So that is the triggers cycle in essence. Again, it's on repeat, and it's something that we go through every day. Uh, so with that being said, the question is, why do you keep letting your emotions get the best of you? So that's a great question. The answer is simple and yet not simple. The reason that you keep allowing your emotions to get the best of you every time is, and that you're emotionally triggered, is that you're an emotional being. <laughs> so that's simple, right? But it's not simple. So you say, yeah, okay, yes, I know we're all emotional beings, but why? Why do we allow our emotions to rule us? Well, when we are emotionally triggered and our feelings get involved, we are feeling from our gut sometimes, but mostly from our heart and our head, meaning our minds, meaning that what I like to call the inner villain, uh, our self-talk. So from our gut, our instinct, our intuition, that usually tells us whether we should stand and fight or if we should flee, you know, leave. And our gut also tells us if we feel good about something or and, and we should go for it or to caution, think about it more in case we're unsure. But we don't always listen to our gut, right? Our gut's pretty smart and will guide us more clearly than our heart and our head will because often our heart and our head are usually working in tandem, especially when we're in full emotional meltdown and not able to control our responses, our actions, when we are emotionally triggered. So our head tells us to respond the way we allow ourselves to because we feel in that moment that we are right in responding the way we are responding based on our emotional logic at the time. So we're lots, we're saying it's logical. Up here, we're saying it's logical for us to respond this way. Yeah, it's logical. And our heart then tells us to engage with our emotions full swing. And we often feel justified in the moment and allow ourselves to say and do whatever we want because we feel justified in our response. And like I said before, typically our head and heart will work in tandem. They'll feed off of one another because the head's telling the heart to go ahead because of emotional logic. So, like I said, it's simple because we're emotional beings, but it's not so simple because now we have to realize that we have up here our head logically working through things through our emotions, thinking, okay, yeah, I can show up this way. This is the way I should show up. I'm being personally attacked because I'm not seeing things from another perspective. I'm seeing it only from my, through my eyes, what I'm seeing in the moment. And so I'm allowing my heart to then say, okay, yeah, I'm feeling this way, I'm going for it, this is how I'm gonna show up emotionally. And when it's negative, then again, once you've cooled off, you know, you've been through this. I know I've been through it. We say and do things sometimes that really just undermines things and we have to go back and fix it once we've cooled off. So your head tells you you've been wrong, like I said, and why, and that's logical to feel that way and your heart feels wrong and so you emotionally explode. So 
So if, if that makes sense to you, I want you to put a thumbs up in the comments if you understand what I mean. Now, again, with that being said, why do you keep letting your emotions get the best of you? Well, number one, you don't have a strong self-awareness muscle around how you are emotionally triggered. Plus, you're not listening to your gut. Like I said, your gut's your intuition. It can help you a lot, right? So a lot of the time, though, we are just emotionally going for it. Because I said, the heart and the head working in tandem, telling us, yeah, logical to react this way. Heart saying, okay, I'm emotionally feeling this way. I'm going for it emotionally. Work. Yeah, I'm done. I'm saying and doing this. Blah. It comes out, right? So again, that is you don't have a strong self-awareness muscle around how you are being emotionally triggered and how you are reacting and responding. Number two, you're not aware of your triggers. Maybe you didn't even really think about triggers, you know, events, things that happen that are triggering you and how they affect you. Maybe you don't even know what triggers are. Like I said, I've explained it a little bit earlier in the live. Um, but maybe now, number three, you're not clear in how you're being triggered because you're not fully aware of what triggers you. You've never thought about it. And you've probably never heard of this, meaning the trigger cycle, that we all navigate daily, sometimes multiple times a day. Probably no one's ever told you and talked to you about this, right? No one's ever said, you know what, there's a cycle we're, we're going through every day. No one's broken it down. So really, how could you not keep letting your emotions get the best of you, right? How could you not? If you do not fully understand what your triggers are, what triggers are and where yours come from, how can you fully understand how to spot and handle your triggers with your ultimate goal, meaning <clears throat> your ultimate goal being to manage your emotions around this, around being, you know, your triggers are going to happen. Things are going to happen. To throw one more thing into the mix, there are internal stimuli, meaning your personal experiences growing up, living your life over time. So your, your experiences, you have a feeling, an emotion, you attach it to that experience, it becomes a memory and you file it away in your filing cabinet. And then there are external stimuli, meaning random events, people and places, things that happen that often feed off one another. So you might have, like I said, today could be the anniversary date of loss or trauma. You already have those feelings coming in. Something happens externally that already then makes that even that feeling even more heightened. So again, you've got the two feeding off of, off one another, and it's crazy, right? So I did a live about these these two um, things that I was talking about, internal and external. And if you're interested in learn and hearing it, uh, let me know, and I can send you the link. You know, when I realized that I had the power to take back control over our emotions, and then I started working on and strengthening my own self awareness muscle. I realized it was possible not only for me to make better decisions in how I showed up emotionally when triggered, but that I could be more fully engaged in my life. It's allowed me to be stronger and more self-aware so that I've been able to spot my own triggers when I'm emotionally triggered, and I'm using that a lot, but it's true. I'm aware of it, and I can make better decisions in how I show up, meaning the things I say and the things that I do. So that my old MO of allowing my emotions to manage me has now been switched to me managing my emotions. And now I'm, I'm living a more positive and happier life. And that's why I became a coach, to help others learn about this so that they could strengthen their own self-awareness muscle, make better decisions when emotionally triggered, and live a more calm, clear, happy, focused, and positive life turning their old MO of their emotions, managing them, to them managing their emotions. So they will no longer be asking themselves, why am I allowing my emotions to manage me, right? And so with that being said, earlier this year, I had created a program built around this cycle. And the people I've worked with have not only learned how to spot their own triggers, being self-aware around them, but they've learned to make better decisions based on how they are feeling in the moment. It's tough at first, and it can be a little irritating. I won't lie to you. It can be a little irritating at first when you become self-aware of, oh, that's my old MO, because now you're aware of how you typically show up around the trigger because you know your trigger. You've learned what your triggers are. You've learned how you usually show up emotionally, and now you've learned that you realize that the only way to change that is to take back control over this piece. You know, one of my clients told me this. She said, I always thought something was wrong with me for being negative. Hearing that most people are fighting the same battle gives me hope. 
I went from not leaving the house to starting my own business in a few short months. Very exciting how Leslie worked closely with me to clear my mind and provide tools for me to succeed. She's on the top of my gratitude list. You know, that warms my heart to see how someone who went from not leaving her house to becoming a self-confident and strong woman who's now going after what she wants. Her vision is becoming her reality. It just, it really just makes me feel so cool, like so, so amazed that she's now able to do this for herself. I'm so proud of her. So now I went a step further and I improved on my program around this. It's my 90 Days Accelerator program, Manage Your Emotions, Master Your Life, and it's now open for enrollment. If you're that person who's allowing your emotions to manage you and you're ready to take back that control, then this program is for you. You know, a lot of reasons why people have so many issues around how they navigate their emotions is because of fear. A lot of the time it's because of fear. Fear seems to be the one emotion tied to everything. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of the unknown, fear of not having control, fear of being judged. Fear is so powerful, it can stop you dead in your tracks and keep you on that hamster wheel with no hopes of getting off. And your inner villain, the negative self-talk up here, is in control, managing your emotions that are managing you. Now, I don't know if you know this, but we have 21 more days until the end of this year. And we are not only entering a new year, but a new decade. And I want to ask you, do you want to repeat another year or five or 10 with your emotions managing you, remaining your usual MO, having to go back and fix things once you've cooled off because now you know you've hurt someone's feelings and now you've got to go back and fix it? which makes, makes it, takes you away from being in your present, so you're barely present looking after what's going on in your life today, and you have no hope of even looking to your future, of what's next, because you're not focusing on that. Or are you ready to take back your power and manage your emotions so that you can master your life? If you're ready, click on the link in the title notes. Let's set up a call to see if you are a good fit for the program, and let's get you on the right footing to start off your new year your new decade, so that you can start living your life with more clarity, more confidence, more commitment with intention, and of course, happier and content. I want you to remember something, time waits for no one. So if you're on the fence about the rest of your life being what you want it to be, then now is the time to take back the power over your emotions so you can realize your dreams. Because only you can make that decision for you. Everything that has happened to, our, to us in our lives, for the most part, has been because of choices we've made. The decisions that we've made, the roads that we've, dis, we've chosen to go down, the jobs we've accepted, the people we've allowed into our lives and to influence us has been our choice. We have had those choices that we've taken for ourselves a lot of the time manage us because we've not taken responsibility for our choices. We've not taken responsibility for our emotions. This is our responsibility to manage so that we can make better decisions on how we are emotionally showing up when we get triggered. And again, like I said, on repeat, it's gonna happen. You can't change it, it's gonna happen. It's up to you though to take back control. I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. Remember to navigate your day with an attitude of gratitude because with the right attitude, it puts you in the right mindset for when life happens. I'm Leslie Gadette and I'm an empowerment coach. I help my clients achieve self-awareness around their emotions, right? So that they can handle their triggers, manage their emotions, and live a more positive life. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you all tomorrow. Bye for now.